uh, Yorktown has maintained uh, the sort of uh, strict uh, military protocol that the Navy uh, uh, likes so much. They've uh, had all the piping aboards and, uh, and all the correct dress uniforms and various ceremonies. But this morning, uh, protocol broke down just a bit when one man stepped out of his cabin and bumped uh, squarely into Captain Lovell, who was uh, rushing down the passageway in his uh, pajama bottoms. <laughs> One, uh, one small episode yesterday that uh, got kind of lost in, the, in all the excitement uh, of the recovery. After the frogmen had, uh, had uh, safely gotten the astronauts up and away and uh, had safely uh, moved the capsule uh, next to the ship and seen it hoisted aboard, uh, they followed their routine by swimming back uh, behind the ship and waiting to be picked up. And the next thing they knew, there was a shark of about eight or 10 feet. Every time the story is told, they, the shark gets bigger, but right now it's about 10 feet, uh, was in their area. So the helicopter moved in very quickly and dropped its basket, which is supposed to carry two men. And all three dived into it. And I don't know who lost the toss, but one man dropped out. The other two were hoisted up. And then the basket came back for the third frog man. Uh, they were not harmed by the shark, but there was one there. I wonder if this was the same shark that appeared a few days ago when uh, the Yorktown had its second swim crawl of the cruise. Uh, a large number of men were in the water, and a large number of men got out of the water in a great hurry when the shark appeared. And the Marines opened fire, and the shark thereupon, uh, thereupon vanished. Colonel Borman, standing at the rail on the starboard side of the Yorktown, over to the uh, island superstructure, waving uh, to the Arlington uh, about 50 yards away. Interesting bit of military protocol yesterday morning when the astronauts came on board. As uh, the crew of a, uh, of, a, of a command vehicle, a craft, namely the Apollo 8, they were rendered military honors not only when they got on deck, but over the loudspeaker system. There were four bongs, and the uh, message, the word was passed, Apollo 8 arriving. Well, this is customary when the uh, captain of a, of a ship arrives on board uh, another ship. And presumably, uh, a few minutes from now, when they leave, when they're catapulted off the deck, just before they leave, the word will be passed, Apollo 8 departing. The Arlington is now passing alongside uh, the uh, starboard or right side of the ship, uh, bobbing up and down in the, uh, in, the, in the fairly heavy seas this morning. And its crew is lined up uh, on, on its deck in their dress white uniforms passing by to uh, take the, to give the salute and take the salute and to see the three astronauts, Foreman, Lovell, and Anders. All of them standing at parade rest on the uh, flight deck of the Arlington. And the astronauts on the uh, flight deck of the Yorktown. Beautiful sight out here in mid-Pacific. All of the uh, crew of the Arlington uh, in their dress tropical whites standing uh, alongside the rails. Uh, all facing toward the Yorktown and rendering military honors to the astronauts. A bit cloudy uh, on the Pacific today, but uh, in this part of it, but uh, still, as you say, a beautiful sight. And the astronauts standing there at the rail of the Yorktown, waving to the Arlington. Not too formal at this moment, uh, just a good old-fashioned wave. Well, having saluted once, they've taken care of that aspect of the business. Now they, now they can be informal. Actually, it's rather warm out here. It's cloudy, but the sun keeps breaking through the clouds. The carrier has been slowing down. Uh, it's turning into the wind now in order to launch aircraft. It has to, get a, has to have a certain uh, uh, velocity of, of uh, winds across the deck for the aircraft to take off successfully, even with the assistance of the catapult. The Arlington was one of three methods of communication used on this uh, cruise and for the recovery. They wanted some backstop plans. Uh, this area, the communications are shaky here, partly because it's so remote, partly because of atmospheric conditions. So the uh, system of uh, relaying to the Arlington was one. The ship's own communications was another, and a special high-power transmitter put aboard, especially for this mission, was the third. The astronauts now uh, leave the rail where they've waved to the communications ship Arlington and its crew, and are now uh, some final handshakes uh, with various people on the ship and space officials who have been involved in the pickup. Final handshakes and then aboard the cod plane for the flight to Hawaii. A 
accompanying them on that on that number one cot plane will be Ben James, who's the chief NASA public affairs officer on board. Dr. Clarence Jernigan, chief of the NASA medical team on board. Two uh, NASA photographers, Otis and Bowden and Noah Lamar, and Dr. Charles Lapinta, a flight surgeon. Now, all of them have uh, been very closely involved in the NASA recovery operation of Apollo 8. There will then be a second car flight, uh, which will uh, contain a number of other NASA representatives. Including an uh, artist who was uh, hired on to uh, paint pictures of what the recovery looked like. Yes, one of two artists. He is Nick Solovia. The uh, men in charge uh, who have been given the assignment of getting the astronauts uh, safely back to the, uh, to the beach, as they call it in the Navy, to Hawaii, the crew of the cot plane, the officer in charge is Lieutenant Commander Al Miller. There are two co-pilots, Lieutenant Stephen Collins and Lieutenant Junior Gray Bill Bears, and two crew members, uh, Airman Clarence Atkinson and Airman Craig Ulrich. And they are the ones who will fly this plane from the carrier, taking the astronauts uh, back to dry land for the first time in a week. Well, we're going to uh, recapitulate briefly now and go back to what happened last night in the wardroom, uh, where all three of the astronauts appeared before the ship's officers at a candlelight dinner, which included large amounts of roast beef. And uh, all of them made brief speeches. Uh, they sat at uh, the head table, uh, surrounded by the senior officers of the Yorktown, uh, flanked by Captain Fightfield, commanding officer, and, uh, and uh, Commander William Parks, the executive officer, the uh, weapons officer, the ship's chaplain, uh, Commander Beltman, and, and various other uh, members of the, uh, uh, the senior officers of the Yorktown. And it was one of those, uh, it was one of those uh, traditional ceremonies that have uh, marked all of the recoveries, or almost all the recoveries, of astronauts following their space flights. And it was, that was followed by another traditional ceremony, as we said a moment ago, the appearance on the hangar deck before most of the ship's crew, the re-enlistment ceremony presided over by Captain Lovell, and then the cutting of a gigantic cake, seven feet long, three feet wide, 14 layers deep, uh, of which the crew partake, partook in generous measure uh, after the astronauts themselves had gone back up to their quarters uh, for a good night's sleep. Last uh, night I passed uh, the table on the hangar deck where the cake had been, and there was nothing but ruin. Well, uh, yes indeed. Well, it's the uh, atmosphere in the wardroom last night was a bit more formal than that. And, uh, uh, and actually, this was Captain Lovell, who is an officer of the U.S. Navy, well performed the uh, re-enlistment ceremony. Held in front of a huge American flag on a platform on the hangar deck of the Yorktown. It uh, pleases me to officiate at this re-enlistment ceremony for the USS Yorktown. Standing before me, I see a bosun's mate, three engineers, two aviation ratings, and a radioman. This is a good cross-section of the ship, and each ship needs all ratings to operate as a team. The fighting lady proved once again today that she is indeed operated by a well-coordinated team. It gives me great pleasure to administer the enlistment oath to these men who are re-enlisting for a total of 38 years more service to their country. Colonel Borman and Lieutenant Colonel Anders join me in asking that this ceremony represent our esteem for the Apollo 8 team throughout the world. Raise your right hand and please repeat after me. I please state your full name. To hereby acknowledge. You have voluntarily enlisted under the conditions prescribed by law this 27th day of December, 1968. In the U.S. Navy for a period of four or six years, is that the In the U.S. Navy for a period of four years. Unless sooner discharged by proper authority. And I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, born and 
domestic. But I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officers, and the orders of the officers appointed, over me, appointed over me, according to regulations, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military, military, justice, and the uniform code of military justice. So help me God. Uh, that was, was Captain uh, Lovell presiding at reenlistment ceremonies last night on the hangar deck of the York Town. Now, Captain Lovell, Colonel Borman, and Major Anders, uh, soon to be Lieutenant Colonel Anders, uh, because of his successful space flight, are on board a Navy Cod flight.